was 12, there was this boy at my school called David. One weekend, he asked me to come to his house for a sleepover. It was a bit unexpected because I didn't know David very well. We had talked a few times before, but we weren't close friends. He had only joined the school the year before, so we hadn't really spent too much time together. I told him I wasn't sure, but he convinced me, so I agreed and asked my mom when I got home from school. She said yes and drove me to his house after school. It was my first time being at David's house, and I was still pretty surprised that he invited me over, but I thought it was nice to be making a new friend. He showed me around his house, which was very nice. He had a big living room with a huge TV and lots of cool video games. We played some Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros. David. Overall just seemed a little bit strange to me. He had this quirky way of talking and moving, and his room was filled with all sorts of unusual things like comic books and action figures. I didn't really know what exactly it was, but I felt like I just didn't really get along with him. Then it was bedtime. I climbed into my sleeping bag on the floor of David's room. It was a pretty big room for a kid. It took me a long time to fall asleep, but eventually I did. However, a few hours later, I woke up feeling really sweaty. I noticed that my sleeping bag was zipped up all the way, and there was another blanket covering my head. I took off the blankets and felt much cooler right away. I looked around and knew I definitely didn't put that extra blanket on myself. I thought maybe David did it, but I couldn't figure out why. Then I noticed David was awake. I asked him why he put the blanket on my head, but he said he didn't do it. I knew he was lying, but when I accused him again, he got pretty angry at me. His face turned red and he started to raise his voice. I felt a bit scared, so I decided to just try to go back to bed and make it through the rest of the night. I figured I could go back home in the morning and sort things out then. It took me a while, but eventually I was finally able to get back to sleep. When I woke up, it was morning. I looked around the room, expecting to see David, but he wasn't there. I thought maybe he went to the bathroom or something, so I waited for a few minutes. But then, I really had to pee, so I tried to leave the room, but the door wouldn't open. It seemed like it was locked from the outside. That was it for me. I was really annoyed with how David was treating me, so I called my mom on my phone and asked her to come pick me up. I didn't have a good time at all. By this point, David just seemed really annoyed to me. My mom told me she would come and get me, which made me feel relieved. I knocked several more times and even shouted his name once. But still, there was no response. David's house was pretty big, so I figured I wasn't in any immediate danger. But the whole thing just made me really angry and frustrated. I felt trapped and annoyed at David for not listening. Finally, after what felt like forever, David's mom opened the door to his bedroom. She looked a bit surprised to see me, and then said in a slightly annoyed tone that my mom was here to pick me up. I left without even seeing David. It was Sunday, so I spent the rest of the day chilling at home and playing video games. Later that night, I was in my bedroom when my mom called out to me that one of my friends was there. I walked out and saw David standing at the front door. His expression was tense, like he was upset. I went over to him and he asked me in an angry tone why I left his house so early without even saying goodbye. I explained to him that he had locked me in his bedroom and I didn't know where he went. But he denied it and accused me of being a bad friend. I didn't really care though. I just went back inside and started playing video games again. But about 15 minutes later, I suddenly heard a loud crash coming from my window. It scared me so much, I thought my heart would stop. I looked over and saw glass scattered everywhere. 
My parents rushed into my room when they heard the glass breaking. I was fine and wasn't near the window. They hurried to the window and saw David running away down the street. My parents called his parents and I could hear them arguing for a while before they hung up. I'm not sure what happened to David after that, but I never saw him at school again. I live in a really small town where everyone knows each other, and we usually get along fine. We're just a small dot on the map of our state. We're like outcast, hardly noticed by anyone. But I really like living in this small town. The people here are nice and always ready to help. At least, that's what I used to think. But then I realized how unsafe it can be, especially for a 15-year-old girl like me. It was a really hot day, the kind where just breathing feels hard, let alone doing anything active. I had a different idea and decided to have a sleepover with my best friend who was already at my place. We packed our things and headed to her house. But just as we were about to leave, we heard the ice cream truck's music. I smiled at my friend and said we could get free ice cream because the owners are friends with my family. When the big white truck came into our little neighborhood, all the kids gathered around it like seagulls flocking for french fries at the beach. They had their coins ready, making a tinkling sound. I waited for the excited kids in front of me to get their ice cream first, before they left. I checked the menu and asked my friend what she wanted. We both made our choices. When I looked up at the man to order, I was about to say his name. But then I realized he was a total stranger. I stared at him in shock with my mouth open, then said where the usual guy and his son were. They went on vacation and left me in charge. So what do you want, pretty girl? He said with a very creepy smile. I didn't want to talk much to him, but I also didn't want to be rude. The man looked to be in his thirties, very tan and hadn't shaved for a few days. He was wearing a dirty white tank top, and I couldn't see his pants. Oh, I just wanted to say hello, I said, and then turned away. My friend was behind me. She asked, What's the matter? And walked with me. We just started walking towards her house. I turned to her and explained that the man selling ice cream wasn't the usual one, and the regular guy wasn't on vacation. Also. This guy seemed really creepy, and my gut feeling told me he might be dangerous. I've always trusted my instincts. We just kept walking, chatting about random stuff to kill time. Soon, I heard the ice cream truck's song coming from down the road. I didn't mind picking up the pace despite the hot weather. Then the ice cream truck's song stopped, but I could still hear the engine. It was getting louder slowly. I saw the man passing us from the corner of my eye, going by us slowly and giving us a look. I glanced at him, and then he suddenly sped off, turning left at the intersection. My friend and I felt a bit scared now, so we turned right and walked down a road. On our left was a park that most people call Wharf 5 for some reason. One of our friends was there, so we waved. She smiled and came over to us. We chatted for a while, mainly to take a break and relax. Then she turned to me and asked, Did you see the ice cream man? He seemed creepy and wouldn't stop staring at me. We told her she could walk with us since her house was on the way. We talked and laughed, trying to forget about the strange guy. Then we heard it again, the ice cream truck song getting closer. We looked and saw the old truck coming down a private road that branched off from the one we were walking on. We just kept walking and ignored him, thinking he was just doing his job. But suddenly, he stopped when he saw us, his eyes lingering on us for a moment, before he turned left and drove off down the road. Soon enough, we reached our friend's house. She said goodbye and told us to hurry home. 
We agreed, and kept walking as she went inside her house where it was safe. It was getting dark, and we still had a 30 minute walk ahead of us. We kept talking, trying to make things feel better again. But about 20 minutes later, we heard it, the ice cream truck music. It played for a bit, then stopped. The engine roared. We knew he must have been driving fast. We started running as fast as we could and reached our house in just a few minutes. We tried to open the door, but it was locked. There was a note on it saying, Gone to the store. Be back soon. Spare key in the garage. She ripped the note off, and we ran out back, getting away from the lights of the ice cream truck creeping by. It stopped right outside her house. The big white door opened, and the man got out. He walked up to the door and knocked. When nobody answered, he tried to open the door. He grunted in frustration and then kicked the door before going around to the back. We hid under the porch, crouching down to stay out of sight. He walked up the stairs and banged on the door, shouting, Open up. I know you're in there. We stayed quiet, and I peeked through the cracks in the boards. I saw he was holding a shotgun, and, believe it or not, he aimed it at the door and shot the lock. He opened the door and went in. We sprinted down the street towards our friend's house. We heard the man yelling, and then we heard the shotgun again. I prayed to God he wasn't aiming at us, and if he was, he must have missed. My heart was pounding faster than ever before and we just kept running to a nearby neighbor's house. We explained to them, still out of breath and clearly scared. They called the police and locked the doors. We saw the cops drive by the house and they stopped once to check on us and make sure we were safe. About an hour later, they returned. They said they found a shotgun but couldn't find the man or his truck. My friend's mom returned home and apologized for leaving the house. This happened last year, and now I'm 16 years old. The man whose ice cream truck was stolen never got it back, and the creepy guy was never found. When I turned eight, my mom decided to throw a party for me. She invited her friend over, who brought her kids along. We'll call them Sally, Billy, and Lily. After the party ended, we gathered in the living room for sleepover and put on a horror movie. Anyhow, I got a bit bored, so I suggested we play hide and seek. Surprisingly, everyone else seemed bored too, so they all agreed. We decided to use rock, paper, scissors to choose who would be the seeker. My oldest brother, Charlie, was chosen to be the seeker. He headed down the hall to the bathroom to start counting. Now let me describe the house layout. When you walk in through the front door, right away you'll spot the stairs on your left. Once you climb those stairs, you'll find yourself facing a hallway. To your right is Justin's room, where we were all gathered to watch the movie. And if you go straight, you'll reach my sister Charlene's room. When you turn left at the stairs, you'll find my room on the right side, and if you turn left again, you'll find my mom's room. Keep going down the hall, and when you turn right, you'll see three doors and another set of stairs. Straight ahead is the linen closet, and to the left of it is the stairway. Charlie went to count in the bathroom while the rest of us scattered to hide. I dashed downstairs, and thought hiding behind the couch would be clever. Around that time, one of my uncle's friends, Scott was crashing on the couch, totally wasted. But it didn't bother us much, so we shrugged it off. I remember seeing Lily come downstairs, searching for a hiding spot. And for some reason, she decided to hide with me behind the couch. I didn't think too much about it, because I thought hiding behind the couch was a brilliant idea. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we were playing hide and seek in the dark, which I guess makes the story even more disturbing. 
Charlie was quick to find everyone, but I stayed hidden behind the couch with Lily. When suddenly, Scott erupted into laughter and pointed up at the ceiling. I think Lily noticed, because she put her hand on my shoulder and said, Don't worry, my friend. You will be fine. I am with you. Her voice sounded strange, like it was coming from far away or something. I turned to look at her and asked what was wrong with her voice, but then I saw her hand. Her hand appeared unusually bony and pale, which struck me as odd. So I glanced towards her, expecting to see her familiar figure, but instead, I witnessed something horrifying. Its eyes, ears, and mouth were massive and seemed out of place on its small, misshapen face. I let out a huge scream, so loud it felt like it echoed through the whole house. Without thinking, I leaped over the couch, desperate to escape from whatever that terrifying thing was. Charlie must have heard me, because he came into the room just in time to see me sprinting back upstairs. The scary thing kept chasing me, until I ran back into Justin's room and slammed the door shut. Everyone returned to the room and told them about what I saw. But according to Lily, she hadn't even gone into the living room at all during that round. Instead, she was with Charlene, hiding in the dining room under the table. Suddenly Justin started panicking, and then he said for everyone to look at my back. I turned around and looked at my back, and I saw a lot of red on my shirt. Charlie lifted up my shirt and saw four large scratch marks across my back. It was strange, because at first, I didn't even feel the blood or scratches on my back. But then it started hurting a lot, and I began to cry. Charlene asked if I still wanted to play hide and seek, but I was way too scared. I told them to go ahead without me. Justin offered to stay with me so I wouldn't be scared again. He was about to take me to the bathroom to clean the cuts, but then he stopped outside the bedroom door. By then, everyone had already found a hiding spot, so when he said someone was peeking out of Charlie's bedroom, it was strange. I walked into the hallway and saw the head slowly ducking back into the room. The head was completely white, almost like it was glowing. Also, the hallway light outside the bathroom was on for some reason, which helped us see it better. According to my brother, it didn't have any facial features. When I saw it, I screamed again and ran back into the room. Once again, everyone rushed back in, asking what happened. This time, Justin told them and asked Charlie if it could have been him. But he said he hadn't even been in his room. Everyone then decided that we'd all stay in one room for the night and keep watching movies until we fell asleep. The only time we left was when my sister took me to the bathroom to clean the blood off my back. It was tough to sleep that night because the scratches hurt so much, but eventually I managed to doze off. The next morning, my sister took me back to the bathroom to check if my cuts were still bleeding. They weren't. In fact, they had completely disappeared. In the end, I'm so grateful that I no longer live in that house. I moved out before starting fifth grade, and thankfully the house is now empty. I never figured out what that thing was. And honestly, I'm not sure I want to know. I've known Jack for what feels like forever, and we've been best friends since we were kids. Over the years, we've had countless sleepovers at each other's places. Sometimes because my parents were away, or Jack needed help with school, or we just wanted to hang out. There have been so many reasons over the years. Jack and his family got their house when his grandmother passed away a few years ago. It's pretty big for a one-story house, with lots of rooms and extra spaces, like most houses have. When you walk in the front door, there's a long hallway 
about 20 to 25 feet long. There are doorways leading to other rooms. At the end of the hallway, on the left side, there's a room we call the den. It's a pretty big living room connected to a dining area and kitchen. On the right side of the hallway, there's a door that goes to a guest room. But now it's used for storage. Jack has lived in that house for a long time, and he's told me about some strange things he's seen and felt there. Feeling like someone is watching him and hearing weird noises. I remember one time when we were all at Jack's mom's office across the street. It was a busy day, but I really needed to use the bathroom. So I asked Jack's mom if I could. She kindly handed me the keys to their house, which was just across the street. I have to admit, I was a bit of a nervous kid, easily scared by things. So when she told me I had to go to their house alone, I wasn't very happy about it. As far as I can remember, I was using the bathroom in their house all by myself, when suddenly, the fan in the bathroom turned on by itself. I hurried to finish up and got out of there as fast as I could. Then, a few years later in 2014, I went to his house a lot, mostly hoping to see more strange things happen. And from that year until late 2015, I had seen enough strange things to make me hesitate about going back to that house. Let's start around mid-2014. Jack and I were 12, so of course we were into doing some silly stuff. We'd usually stay up late if we got any sleep at all, even after his mom told us to go to bed. We usually slept in the den, because the recliners there were comfier than any of the beds in the house. Our routine was pretty much the same every time. Jack would fall asleep, and I'd stay restless all night, until I eventually passed out. The recliners were against the wall so you could see the rest of the den and the dining area. When everything is pitch black, it's easy to feel scared, especially when you can see the kitchen leading to another room. That room was full of old, creepy dolls they used as storage. I remember lying there one time, thinking about something I can't remember now, trying to fall asleep. I was just a few feet away from Jack, and he was already asleep. I started feeling a slight breeze and a cold gust of air. I pulled the blankets over me, thinking it was just a draft. But then, I saw something move out of the corner of my eye, and I heard a faint whisper that sounded like it was right next to me. I didn't sleep much that night. Things like that kept happening afterward. I started to get used to it. But one thing that really scared both me and my friend was the night the door kept opening and closing. This happened around early 2015. Jack and I were just playing Halo 4 when we decided to go to the kitchen and get some sodas. On our way out, we closed the door behind us, but when we returned later, the door was wide open. We didn't think much of it, and went inside to keep playing on his Xbox 360 for a couple more hours. Eventually, we decided it was getting late and time to go to bed. We turned off the games and went straight to bed. His bed was pretty big, so we both slept at different ends. About 30 minutes passed and Jack was already asleep as usual. I was just about to drift off when I heard a faint creaking noise. I looked up and saw that his door was wide open, just like before. Since I really didn't like being able to see down his hallway, which felt like a dark hole in the house. I got up to close the door. But about 10 minutes later, I heard the door open again. I was really scared by then. For the rest of the night, all I could hear was that door creaking back and forth. No surprise. I called my mom to pick me up early the next morning. I wasn't risking anything more. From my experiences, I've learned not to mess with the paranormal, even if you're curious. It can give you nightmares for years. I figured this out, and I hope you do too.